Randy Robison at Life Today TV. I'm here with Rick Dunham, who is the president and founder of Dunham & Company. And he's written a new book called Secure. And in uh, turbulent times like these, Rick, what kind of security are you talking about? <laughs> well, obviously, it's uh, how do you find security when the financial markets are in a meltdown and when things seem so unsure financially? How can I find the security I'm looking for? That's really what the book tries to address. So it's a financial book. Yes, it is. It's a financial book. It's dealing with the issue of how we d get financial security in, in very unstable financial times. But it's not just a financial book. No, it's not just a financial book because obviously our money and our security are tied together. And the book, what I try to do is address very directly what does the Bible have to say about how our security and money relate to each other? Mm -hmm. And then how should we, as a result, relate to money? Okay. Now, you are the president of, of a fairly large company. Mm -hmm. Give me a quick overview of, sure. of kind of what you guys do. Uh, we're in, uh, we have a company based here in Dallas that works... Uh, both here in the U.S. and around the world with uh, Christian ministries, helping them build the resources they need to fund their mission. And we also have an office in Australia, work in Australia, Asia, and about uh, 45 or 50 organizations worldwide that we work with. Okay, so you're helping ministries do their work. Yeah, and to build the funding base that they need in order to fulfill their mission and vision. Now, you have, uh, you have not always been secure yourself, <laughs> and that's part well, of the story in here. Tell, yeah. me, tell me a little bit about your journey. That's good. Uh, the, the journey really started in earnest right after our, uh, when we finished seminary, had a, a young family, and um, about a year and a half into a job was let go, and uh, found ourselves with two house payments, three kids, and no income. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had pretty much used up our savings, and we're, we found ourselves in a pretty destitute position. And in fact, we were two weeks from declaring bankruptcy when some families stepped in. But that was the beginning of a journey of God taking us to a place to help us understand that we really had been misplacing our trust in stuff, and um, He really wanted to be that source of security for us. Now, you've also had a, a personal battle that uh, financially could bankrupt you. Right. Yeah. Uh, we... Um, the first, the first part of the journey started back in uh, the early 80s, um, and then of about five, seven years ago now, uh, was diagnosed with cancer and went through about with that. And uh, that's when God, uh, during the time in the hospital specifically, uh, really spoke to my heart about this issue of what's important, why we're here, what our reality is, mm -hmm. and the real challenge of the spiritual battle that we face. So what's, what's your message out of all that, out of all the, the trials and the trouble and the testing, and, and now you're, you're in a good place financially and spiritually right now. What, what can you tell people kind of looking back over your life? That's a great question. Uh, first, um, kind of the first part for me was the realization that we often talk about spiritual warfare as though it kind of bubbles to the surface now and then, but in reality... Uh, when I, right after I got out of the hospital, I was reading through Acts and came across Acts 26 when Paul is talking uh, to King Agrippa, making a defense for his faith, and talks about how Christ confronted him on the road to Damascus and told him that he was sending to him to the Gentiles to turn them from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan or the power of Satan to God. And it was just, it was a point of realization for me that the gospel really is about a raid on ta Satan's territory for to take back what is rightfully God's, and that's people, their souls and their hearts. And he's passionate about that, and that's a 24-7, 365 day a year uh, mission that God is on. Mm -hmm. And we are engaged in that mission, and it's spiritual warfare, and it's seeking to penetrate the darkness with the light of the gospel. And that has a lot to do with then the resources we have, and how do we take the resources that God's put into our trust and help ensure that that mission is actually accomplished? So that's really a huge part of what the book talks about. So on a personal level, what do you see as the correlation between spiritual warfare and financial security or just security, whether it's through finance? Yeah, that's a really yeah. good question. Uh, I think Satan has obviously, he's a great deceiver and has a lot of ploys to try to, to move God's people out of the battle. 
And the one that tends to be overlooked most is money. Is that that's, that's actually a battle line that's one of the most strategic because it's um, the one thing that Jesus says is tied to our heart. It's the only thing in the scripture that says it's tied to our heart is our money, our treasures. Yeah. And in Matthew 6, he deals directly with that in challenging us not to treasure up treasure here on earth, but to treasure up treasure in heaven, which is eternal and it's secure. But what's interesting in that passage, he goes on then to say, therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. In other words, don't, don't get tied up in what tomorrow's going to look like. I'll take care of you. Be focused on treasuring up treasure in heaven. Be a part of my mission and my priorities for this world through the resources I give to you. So I think that's a huge battle line. And I think in the Western world, we have been uh, deceived into believing that the real security we're going to find is in our stuff and our portfolio and in our investments and our, our salaries when, in fact, God says no. And, in, in fact, the last three years, we, should, we have a pretty uh, stark example of how insecure our financial position can be at any moment. Sounds a little bit like you're saying that we should maybe seek first the kingdom of God <laughs> and then all these other things will be... Well, and, 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 and that's exactly yeah. what Christ says in that parable or in that story. But part of what, what I think we get, well, seek first the kingdom of God. So, okay, I'll go do more Bible study. I'll get into a more prayer life. I'll make sure I do my devotional thing. I'll be at church. When he goes, that's not even the issue I'm addressing. Seek first means take what the resources I've put into you and place those treasures those things up in heaven, put those things into to the, my mission and to kingdom, kingdom purposes. And that's really what he's talking about there when he talks about putting the kingdom first. So put your money where your mission is. Exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. So what do you say to people? I mean, should they plan financially, you know? I mean, Absolutely. Should they listen to Dave Ramsey? I mean, <laughs> just, Absolutely. Should, or just not worry about yeah. anything? I mean, Absolutely. Uh, no, I don't think God calls us to turn our brain off and, and put all the money uh, unwisely just to throw it at things. I, I think the real issue is how we view our priorities. Um, one, of the, one of the chapters I have in here is called The Myth of Stewardship. And the reason I wrote the chapter was when you look at the parable of the talents, it really debunks this idea of the tithe being stewardship. Because we kind of have this notion that, well, we give God our 10%. And then we're done. And we're done. Yeah. And then the 90%, we, if we just do with as we please. Mm -hmm. When in fact, uh, it's interesting, the Center on Philanthropy did a study on giving to religion in America and self-described Baptists, and this is over 20 years, uh, said that 35% said they didn't give at all. 65% hmm. said they gave 2.8% on average. Wow. So we're really bad tippers. <laughs> I mean, we're not even doing the 10% thing. Yeah. So I think what the, the parable of the talents teaches is that it's all in. It's, it's all the resources of God's. The issue is how well we invest that for return for kingdom purposes. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about looking into the future and investing, yeah, God expects us to be wise. In, 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 um, in fact, in Ecclesiastes, Solomon's very clear that the wealth that God gives, not all wealth, but the wealth that God gives, he gives us the power to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So it's not a killjoy when it comes to money it's an issue of priority where do we place our priority in terms of how we use the resources God's put into our trust and out of that our security is in God and not in exactly the the wealth that we have accrued that we think is by our own hands right oftentimes. in fact I think we I think we break the stronghold that money has on us on us when we give it away because mm. at that point we demonstrate that it's no longer controlling us but mm. we're controlling it yeah Good. Good. Well, check out Rick Dunham's book, Secure. You can get it online and uh, in bookstores. And thank you for taking the time to, to enlighten us a little bit about money and security and, and really the important things of God. My pleasure. Thank you.